Hey everyone, Chris here, chrisparlo.com, and today I'm going to do a high-end retouch. I'm going to be using frequency separation, which is something that many of the professional retouchers use in their array of arsenal when it comes to photo retouching. And this is how I'm going to do mine. So let's go ahead and get right into this. Uh, the image that I am using is not my image, uh, so I'm not going to take credit for the image, but I am going to take credit for the retouching. We are using an image from a Canon 1DS Mark III. Uh, it's a very good camera, <clears throat> so uh, let's jump right into this. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the develop module. First thing that I'm going to do is, as you can see, this photo is kind of washed out. Um, that's something that might work to my advantage or I might go a completely different way. So this is more, this is a tutorial, but it's also going to be some experimenting. So uh, let's have fun with this. Uh, let's try a couple different things here. So with the whites, let's just see what happens if I bring it all the way up. You know, I really love the warmth of this, uh, of the glow of the skin in this image. But if I bring the whites all the way up, it's going to take out some of the, the hair details here and it looks kind of funky. So I don't want to do that. And <clears throat> if I bring it all the way down, it brings back the detail, but it makes it even more muted and washed out. But let's go ahead and do this. Let's, let's put this back to zero and let's bring down the highlights. That really helped a lot. Um, and doing that, we can bring the whites up just a bit here just like so, and it doesn't, see it did not take away the detail in the hair right here like it did before. So that's a good thing. Let's bring the blacks down some. Oh, oh, it's just amazing the difference already. So that's good right there for a starting point. Um, I'm not gonna mess with the clarity. Um, what I do wanna do is, is make these eyes pop just a little bit more. You can't really see that one too much, but this one for sure. So what I'm gonna, do is go ahead and zoom in here and you can see that the eyes are really sharp so what I'm gonna do and this is so far I'm doing all this in Lightroom I am gonna go into Photoshop but for the basic stuff I just like to get some things out of the way in Lightroom so grab my adjustment brush here and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change my effect to uh, lighten and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lighten the outside of the eye here, the, the greenish color. Let's drop my feathering down here some, about right there. Make that smaller. Okay. So my exposure on this, on my dodging, is uh, plus 25%. Nothing else has been changed. So what I do is just come in here like so. Brighten this up a little bit. And it's gonna be hard on here, but let me just see if I can do a little bit on this eye right here. All right, so it looks kind of, you know, it doesn't look professional if you look at it from this distance, but when you zoom out, you're not gonna be able to notice that. So let me just go in here and fix this again. By the way, I'm using a Wacom tablet. Uh, it's preferred for editing. Well, I prefer it anyway. All right, so let's click Return on that to save that. And let's go ahead and go to Darken. And what I want to darken is the outside of the iris to really make it pop. So let's just go ahead and darken this. And you'll see when I back out, big difference. All right, let's go to this guy. All right, return, return, look at that. I mean, that just makes the eyes pop. Now, I think I may have gone just a little overboard on the black, on the, on the burning. So let's go ahead and check that and let's drop it down to say 20%. All right, that should be good. Looks a lot better. All right, so now what I want to do is 
think I'm going to take this into Photoshop. So let's go ahead and right left yeah, right click, sorry. <laughs> and edit in Photoshop. And it'll open it up in Photoshop for me. Okay, so now that we're in Photoshop, we can continue with this edit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock this layer. I'm going to create a duplicate layer by hitting Command J. And I'm going to hide the original layer. All right, so now what I want to do is I'm going to get straight into my frequency separation. <clears throat> so I have a preset already. Um, you can go to FX slash Ray. Uh, if you type that into your, uh, your uh, Google, you can go to this page. And this is a free download. Uh, and it has a bunch of different types of, um, of actions. Simple frequency separation, advanced frequency separation, regular frequency separation. Um, it has dodge and burn, soft light layers. It's got a few good things. So what I usually do is I use advanced frequency separation. Um, yes, I do know how to do this <clears throat> manually, but um, once you know how to do things, it's stupid not to have actions to do a lot of these things for you. It's just, it makes your workflow a lot quicker. So let's go ahead and I need to open that. Let's click on advanced and play. So right here is where you set your Gaussian blur. This is the only thing that you have to do when creating this action. Um, I think about, let's see here. 10 actually works. No, no, no. It's a little higher. Yeah. Well, let's see. Yep, 12 will do it. All right, so let's go to 12 pixels. Okay, and then it'll create it. All right, so there's a couple of different things you can do depending on the light, the way the light hits your image. You can come down to skin blemishes and you can check that. As you can see, it doesn't really give a lot of detail because it's pretty dark. And it has to do with the, uh, the lighting. So I'm not going to go, I'm not going to use that. Um, sometimes that does come in handy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the first frequency, uh, high frequency edit right here. Just highlight that. And what you want to do is you want to click on J. All right. So what that does is it brings up your brush tool, your um, quick healing brush see right here not quick healing but your um, spot healing brush tool it might be the healing brush I forget I haven't done this a little bit but all right so what I do is um, I right click and then I change this to a bit of a, a little really big oval and uh, I can change this I want okay so click OK and let's go ahead and zoom into this picture at least 100%. It's a very good sharp image. All right, so now what you want to do is, yeah, that was it. That was the wrong one. I always do that. Healing brush tool. Let's do that again. Let's make this oval here. I set it to right about there. Okay. And so what I do is I check a point that
think we're just about done here. I mean, really was not much to do here. Just a little bit, keep some straight hairs. All right, so let's back out of that. Let's see what we got here. Already looks a lot better. Like I said, I'm gonna use a clone stamp to get rid of that. See now that I backed out, I can see some other things here. All right, so my frequency separation portion is complete. So let's go ahead and do this. I am going to grab that and those. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to, no, not that. I'm going to hit Command J to duplicate those layers and um, go back to the original layers and I'm going to do is I'm going to stick them in a folder and name that frequency separation. Close that. Grab these three and enlarge them. All right. So there's my frequency separation layer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my clone stamp tool and I am going to I'm going to clean this up here a little bit. Look at that. Bam, gone. A couple other spots here I want to get rid of real quick. Uh, zoom in here a little bit. Brush. Well, maybe a hundred is too much. So let's drop it to about thirty. Let's do the same thing for the flow. Let's go back in here. Much better. A lot more subtle. looking good all right so now that I have that done um, I really don't think there's anything else that I want to do here in Photoshop so what I'm going to do is save it and take it back into Lightroom where I can finish doing any minor touches that I want so let's go ahead and command s to save Okay, so now we're back in Lightroom and let me show you a before and after. So here is the original image as it came out of the camera. And here is the after image. It looks a lot better. It still can use some work. So let's go ahead and finish it up here. All right, so what I want to do now is let's go ahead and bring up the contrast just a little bit. And let's bring down the saturation just a touch. Right there. Perfect. All right, so now what I would like to do is I would like to bring a little sharpness into the hair and the eyes. So let's go ahead and go grab my brush. Let's grab my adjustment brush. I can't talk today. So I'm going to click on sharpness and let's zoom in on the eyes here. And just give it one good swoop right there, a little bit right there. That's done. Let's go back. Um, now what I would like to do is let's grab some clarity and let's do the hair. So let's just bring this up here. Just bring some more pizzazz and uh, detail into the hair. pop a little bit more. Looks so much better already. Let's 
just put the feathering out some. It's looking pretty good. All right. So I'd say that, that looks a lot better. But uh, what I think I need to do is maybe soften up the face just a tad. So let's go back up here to my adjustment brush and let's click on Skift Skin Softening. Now, what I like to do with this is when I press O, what it does, it does, shows the overlay and it shows where I am, uh, where I'm working. So this just makes this process a lot easier. Make sure not to get the hair or the eyebrows, eyelashes, or the eyes for that matter. And this is just going to soften the face up a little bit. Now you can see it's uh, the clarity is set to negative 100. I am going to change that. Once I finish this, um, and uh, I set it to negative 100 so I can see the difference and adjust it accordingly. That's just the way that I like to do it. Of course, you are more than welcome to do it however you want because that's what makes you unique and your work unique, your sense of art. That is what makes all this so wonderful. If everyone did everything the same, the world would be pretty boring. All right, so let's get in here. It's usually good to zoom in to really get them, but uh, you won't notice. All right, so if I take the overlay off, you can see that the face is really, really softened. I don't want it that much. I want about half of that. So, actually, 42. That looks perfect. All right, so let's see the before and the after. It's like night and day, isn't it? It looks amazing. So, I think that's pretty much all that I'm going to do. You don't want to overdo a retouch. Um, you still want it to look natural, but give it that little bit of pizzazz that it needs and I think that this is it for me so thanks for watching hope you guys liked it if you have any questions please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below you can always visit my website at chrisparello.com you can view my work on there you can also uh, ask me questions through my contact me section in my page um, and uh, that's it guys thanks for watching talk to you guys next time see ya